Hello everybody, uh, this is uh, EGOV News and uh, this is our standard uh, Friday coffee talk and uh, I have my coffee somewhere but... <laughs> <laughs> and today we are talking about uh, bees, right? Yes, we are and we have a, a very special guest with us today um, it's Augustine. So Augustine, do you want to tell us about bees? Oh, why not? Well, for starting, uh, my family has uh, uh, worked with bees for, for a long time my grandparents, uh, my grandfather was a beekeeper mm -hmm. uh, in Argentina. So since I was a kid, I was uh, aware of all of the the situation with bees, and, and uh, we were working with them. So yeah, basically today we're going to talk about uh, bees and the uh, bees colony uh, collapse disorder. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the problem that uh, we are facing with bees. They are disappearing from one day to the other, uh, the apiaries, the beehives, are are being um, kind of uh, empty from one day to the other. So, yeah, it, it would be nice to talk about how how we can help on on this. Okay, I, I don't know, Neil, if you knew, if you knew that uh, one third of the food that we consume is uh, pollinized by by bees. One third of all our food is yeah. helped by bees. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, and, and tell me something, you, you told me something about your grandfather, that he had a, roughly a, a million bees at, at the peak of time or something like that. No, 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 uh, I don't know how many bees he <laughs> how had. Many bees did he have? <laughs> how many beehives did he have? Uh, more than a thousand. More than a thousand uh, yeah, beehives? Yeah, a thousand and two hundred. And how yeah, many beehives. how many bee, how many bees per hive would you guess? Oh, no, I really don't know that. <laughs> no, but, I could, but I could imagine <laughs> Quite it a lot. should be at about a thousand. So I think the the million figure was not too far off. Far yeah, off what you no, said. We, yeah, we, yeah. we worked it out. You know, yeah. it's it's analytics are very important to us. You know, we need to look at the figures. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to throw one figure into the fray immediately, which is the figure that um, I, I I saw that there were forty five percent reduction in honeybees in the United Kingdom since two thousand and ten. That's eight years. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about Brexit at the moment, and this is sort of like the B exit from the United Kingdom. Is that dangerous? Is, that, is, that, is there a problem with that for Britain? Yeah, I, I think for sure um, we, we can analyze several dimensions. One is the economic. Uh, in many places, many countries, uh, beekeeping is a very important economic activity. And, and also about the food security, uh, it's a, a very important issue to address. But uh, maybe for those who don't really know what colonizing is, mm. you know, because everybody sucks. Okay, bees are important, but I would say for ordinary Mr. Joe, not to offend anybody, <laughs> any uh, you know, any Joe, like, what does it mean? What does it mean that what, what the bees actually do, you know? Well, they, they go yeah. uh, flower by flower. Mm -hmm. They take the pollen from the flowers mm -hmm. and, and they indirectly help to pollinize the, 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 the flowers so, so that they can grow you know uh, I, i'm not a biologist or i think i think it's the male and the female parts of the different plants isn't mm. it that what they do is they take mm. the pollen and they fertilize uh, the other part of the plant but the plants actually mm. require the insects mm -hmm. it's part of the eco ecosystem so mm -hmm. plants can't flourish properly mm -hmm. that's, exactly. that's my understanding of mm -hmm. it without yeah. without the bees actually doing yeah this because part this, of the job. Uh, this pollinization can, i think can also be done by the wind or whatever mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the bees are the the most uh the most common way. Co common way, yes. The most efficient. Yes. So, so I think we have to stress on the importance of that. Yes, yeah, so bees are kind of uh, integral part of our ecosystem. Uh, you know that somehow you know enables everything to grow, right? So so without the bees, the crops will be thirty percent less. Yeah, that's what you said. Exactly. The food, the food population, the yeah. food that we eat, mm -hmm. uh, is um, mm -hmm. pollinized by by bees. One third of the food that we eat. Yeah, and now you had some numbers on this decrease, right? So I think yeah. we, we had some data. I did. I mean, it's actually mm -hmm. quite shocking mm -hmm. um, because I want to read you out a quote by Einstein, actually, mm -hmm. which which is that if the bee disappeared off mm -hmm. the face of the earth, mm -hmm. off the face of the planet, man would have only four years left to live. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've heard, you know, if Einstein actually said it, but somebody said it, and it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting one. You know, but the figures we've got are stark. I mean, I've already told you about the UK, 45% decline. That's nearly half the bee population gone in eight years, which is the most shocking of all. Now, I believe there's been a 25% reduction in bees um, in Europe since um, 1985. And I saw that there'd been a 40% uh, decrease um, in the bee population in the United States since 2006. Now, those are figures um, provided by Greenpeace. 
I, I assume they're roughly correct, you know, but th those are shocking. It's happening on a worldwide basis by the look of it. Yeah, for sure. In Argentina, I was reading also some numbers about it. And in some provinces, provinces uh, also the decrease on the bees was more than 50%. So we are talking about uh, kind of ecosystem collapse. We are at the, at the verge mm. of ecosystem collapse because uh, bees are you know, dying out. They are dying out, basically, right? Yeah. So, so why is this happening, Augustine? Do you? I, I think, I think we, we probably all know the answer to that. But I mean, wh why do you think it's happening? Well, uh, I think uh, regarding what my father uh, tell me, uh, and my grandfather also. Uh, in the last years, we started to make a, a different usage of, of the land. Uh, for example, we are focusing on some kind of crops mm -hmm. that perhaps are not as uh, mm -hmm. as helpful for the bees as we expect. Uh, so the bees do not find mm. the correct flowers uh, in their ratio of mm. uh, action. So this could be one of them. And also the pesticides that uh, the agriculture industry is using is also affecting the, the bees population. So the way the farming is done is kind of uh, causing all the trouble. Yeah, so the bees, first of all, yeah, so they are die off of the pesticides and also because of the types of the things that are grown are not really relevant for that. Uh, exactly, yeah? they, they do yeah? not find the, mm. the resources that they need, the, mm. the flowers or, or the crops that provide flowers. Okay. Yeah, so it's commercial farming really in monocultures and using pesticides and us using chemicals. Exactly, to do and is, there are also thing. studies that show that, for example, the antennas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the frequencies, <laughs> mobile phones, the antennas and oh, mobile phones. Oh, no, no, ah, don't okay. tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. I love yeah, my yeah. smartphone. Is no. there any truth in that? Any evidence of that? Uh, I, re I really don't know, but this is kind of. Uh, uh, People I, talks about I think this. I think there is no no study, so I, I think we can't tell. You know, I I, I think that's the problem. Perhaps some yeah. of the people out there yeah. watching know about some studies, or they mm. can do some Google searches and and mm. tell us, um, you know, what what actually is uh, do do mobile phones affect bees? Are bees being killed by pesticides? I mean, it's something that is actually very important to us all, and it's not a, it's not a laughing matter in my view. I mean, no, we we, sure we talked about not. Black Mirror earlier, mm. and we have a lovely picture if you see behind me now. Um, of artificial, artificial bees, <laughs> and I don't think that's the way forward. But I mean, you you'd, you'd um, talked about you know something about AI actually helping yes. um, bees. Exactly, yeah. there are some some studies and some uh, some experiments done in this area. Uh, basically, what they what they are doing is to create beehives. Beehives, let's call beehives to the houses of, of the bees where they live. Uh, they are creating smart beehives. Mm -hmm. uh, with IoT sensors, for mm -hmm. example, to measure the temperature, to measure the amount of uh, dioxide, uh, uh, the amount of uh, noise. Also, the noise that the bees produce is also an indicator of their health or what's happening in the beehive. For example, in reproduction, reproduction times or when they are attacked by other uh, species. Uh, so, they are collecting a lot of data uh, mm -hmm. with these uh, smart beehives. Mm -hmm. And they are using big data and AI to kind of uh, find patterns on this data. And, and some, something that is very um, interesting is mm -hmm. that uh, they are using bees to uh, kind of uh, predict the weather. Mm -hmm. Because they related first this data with the weather forecast. And, mm -hmm. and they are trying to, to see which, which is the behavior of the bees during rainy days or so these are as, as sensors kind yeah of like, exactly yeah? So, so we use animals as kind of sensing devices extended yeah. sensing devices right exactly yes yeah. well i must admit now i like the idea of using technology to improve the lives of bees but what i don't like is the idea of bee drones and you know why not why because basically if we had little little, little tiny bees which are doing the work of real insects mm -hmm. they don't produce honey and i love honey you know? That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. in, the, the, in the episode of Black Mirror, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that they don't provide, uh, they don't produce uh, honey, but they do the pollinization. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should uh, develop better bees that will be doing the honey as well. No? well why, why not starting by trying? <laughs> but why do we want to produce yeah. a, a mechanical yeah. version of something which is already no. very good and perfect? I know that the mechanical bees don't sting you, but in Black Mirror, yeah. they did much worse than that. Much worse they than they that, actually yeah. killed people, didn't they? You yeah. know, so. I mean, I think like every technology, I think the, the, the message there was that this can those bees could be weaponized. And I think any kind of technology 
mm. you know, if you put enough effort, it can be weaponized. But I think the message there was more about exactly like, do we really need to focus on creating artificial bees or rather saving the original ones? And I think we should rather think of first saving them. And then if nothing helps, maybe to look for alternative solutions because uh, we're talking here about different solutions, right? So mm. Augustine, man, Augustine mentioned the uh, AI, but also at the level of just monitoring the bees, mm. monitoring their behavior, maybe identify patterns and uh, uh, whatever harms them and also learning from them. Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and other things, for example, they use deep learning, mm -hmm. that's a particular mm -hmm. AI technology, mm -hmm. uh, to recognize, for example, uh, some indicators of diseases. Mm -hmm. So they put small cameras inside the beehives and, mm -hmm. and they are able to detect uh, uh, Barroa. Barroa is mm -hmm. one of the most mm -hmm. common um, diseases for bees. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it is detected on early stages, it can be uh, cured mm -hmm. easily but if it's not uh, it will kill all the colony mm. so this is a very important usage of this i, I remember my dad mm -hmm. um, being very sad because of uh, his bees dying because of this mm. uh, yes I, and i think we cannot uh, we cannot um, uh, make their life uh, easier if we do not change the way agriculture is, is being done you know if we do not uh, plant crops and flowers that they, mm. they are able to, to consume, this won't change. Yeah, I mean, I, I think technology mm. is, mm. is a great thing. And I think technology mm. can mm. be used for good or evil. You know, but I, I, I think in terms of nature, my, my own view, and I don't know what mm. your guy, I, mm. I think I do know your mm. idea, but I mean, I think we should be working in harmony with nature and seeing to try and sort of supplement the great things that it already has, mm -hmm. rather than trying to recreate them in an artificial bogus way. And that would be the view I'd have. So I, I'd prefer to see your sensors in real beehives than, than sort of artificial bees trying to do the job yeah. of, of real bees. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. Just like I prefer really to see real people living real lives than artificial robots, uh, you know, getting rid of that us. That would be wonderful. No, but uh, Neil, I, I totally agree. And uh, But I think what we should focus on maybe is because now we say, OK, these are kind of far-fledged plants saying, OK, we should, mon you know, abandon monoculture. We should uh, change this, change that in farming, but at our level, you know, as data scientists, as researchers, what we can do to help uh, to help bees and to save them. Like, you know, you mentioned some things about uh, collecting data. So if you are now, Agustin, to, to collect some data and analyze it, what would you do? Well, first, I, I would try to help beekeepers to mm -hmm. find the, the most suitable places where to place their bees. Uh, because they, they really do a kind of, they try some places, they see how is it going there. Um, they, they are trying to look for the more, the most, um, um, how to say it, um, the most suitable places for, for mm. the colonies. Mm. But this is not a, a precise science, you know, they, they try and sometimes they get errors and these errors cost them a lot of money. Uh, mm. So. Uh, I, I would try to use technology, for example, the GIS systems mm -hmm. uh, and AI to, to kind of recommend places where to, to where put the bees, the bees, the bees and maybe move them around as well if required, because of they, they might need some change as well over time, right? Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I, I do think we need also government programs that come behind this, you know, because I, I remember years ago in Ireland we had this thing, uh, there's a beautiful bird in Ireland called the corncrake, which makes a very sort of specific noise, and it's quite a rare bird. And they were basically dying. They were once very common, but they were dying out because of different farming practices. So there was a very good scheme actually around the River Shannon, whereby all the farmers bought into the idea of um, cutting their grass in a particular way. It was just leaving the grass in meadow for a little bit longer than they normally would. Mm -hmm. okay. And this allowed the corn crakes uh, life cycle to you know, continue. Mm -hmm. So in that area, many corn crakes thrived. And similarly with bees, you know, it's all very well having sort of five farmers do things in, in a very good way but one farmer in the middle has has very serious pesticides you know th this could kill the bee population and and that's the problem you know so what we need is sort of areas i think where bees can flourish and we need sort of government supports for this i believe yeah but but that's more at the policy level i say again mm. and maybe at mm. the also practice level because we talk about farmers themselves as well right so how they how they go and get along with their business you know how they mm. how they farm but i think what we can do again as scientists and researchers is to 
provide enough data and help yeah. help uh, people to share the data and exchange you know their experiences so possibly maybe publishing uh, all the data you mentioned as open data whether yeah. it's uh, just uh, pure numbers or gis or photo photography aerial photography or something like this and this maybe in uh, tandem with some ai can help make better decisions and uh, i think here especially we would uh, we would love to collaborate maybe with some entities uh, in ireland especially west of ireland and go where yeah. we are and uh, if you would be interested in kind of uh, jumping with us on the bandwagon of uh, saving bees save the bees save the bees uh, we would be very pleased and please do not uh, hesitate to contact us so definitely we would look at uh, farmers and anybody who's involved in uh, beekeeping but mm. also probably on policy uh, policy makers as you said and uh, you know anybody who could help in this way you know yeah i i, I think you're right lucas i yeah. think the first step really is to quantify what the, mm. the data is quantify the problems mm. and then that allows governments to make decisions it allows the policy to come mm. in behind it mm -hmm. so as scientists that's exactly what we need to do we need mm. to we need to collect the data mm. to find out how many bees there are find out what the real declines are mm. find out bring together sort of you know the information as to what's causing the difficulties and um, mm. you know work, work it out from a data analytics point of view first mm provide people with the information and once we've done that then um, as you say governments can come in with policy behind that and supports yeah so we will be talking to uh, people from local government and um, around i think and let's see let's hope for the best that we can crack something nice and especially like yeah, if we would be able to to uh, to get this data yeah to, to collect that data effectively and that would help us yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so be good. Be good. Be, be good. Be Think good. of the bees. And we would rather this 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 be here rather than yeah, this this <laughs> the, not this bee, this, whichever way. Right? This bee. This bee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So of course that one is excellent, and maybe we can use it for also for other things. But I think we still want the, these guys to, to to be there and help us and and, and stay alive. So. I think that, that would be it for today. I don't know. That would be it. That Very good. Be it. Yeah. Lots of bee jokes. <laughs> <laughs> be it. And uh, yeah, so again, uh, I would say we are extending the call for uh, collaboration and participation. If you would like to say something about it, or if you just have an opinion, please, uh, please write to us. Uh, we'll be very happy to answer. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be here again uh, next Friday. Uh, again, I will not disclose what is next Friday. Please stay tuned. And uh, that would be it. So thank you very much, and uh, yeah, have a nice, have a nice weekend. Now we're going to buzz off. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye, bye.